Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, and welcome to this week's video. Well, you know, a few weeks ago, President Trump met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And they were talking about the Middle East peace. They were talking about the two-state solution. And, you know, they really didn't come to any conclusions. They kind of dropped a few hints that they were working on something bigger. And you know, no one understood what they were saying or where they were going. And then President Trump said, I'm okay if they do a one-state solution or a two-state solution, whatever they work out. We're working on something bigger. Well, there's been a lot of speculation since then on what was said and what was being done. And a lot of people are saying, well, why is America getting back involved with Israel? You know, can't we be doing other things? And there's been a lot of negative talk about America and Israel. And really, what I want to do today is, is remind people of the history that we have between America and between Israel. You know, I'm going all the way back to the 1800s. In 1880s, there was a man named William Blackstone. Now, if you've studied law, if any kind of legal background, you've studied his legal commentaries. He was a, that's what he's well known for and they're still in existence today. So Blackstone was a, was a leading leader in the 1800s. I mean, he, he was one who had a lot of influence in America. And he, in 1891, Blackstone put together a conference and he, he basically said that the Jewish nation needed a, a land of their own. They needed a place to call their home. And, and that wasn't happening. And then in 1896, Theodore Herzl, if you're over in Israel, Herzl is well known over there. He was a journalist and he was covering a, 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 an article about someone being prosecuted, a Jew being prosecuted for being a spy for Germany. So he realized in 1896, while he was covering this trial, how much of the, the European people hated the Jews. He saw the hate, the hate for Jews firsthand. And he really felt that the Jews needed their own homeland. They needed a place as well. So Herzl, that was a driving force for him. That was his homeland. That's what he wanted. But he came very discouraged, and he thought that was probably never going to happen. So Blackstone reached out to him. Blackstone actually sent him a Bible. And in the Bible, he underlined all the verses that talked about Israel having its land and God blessing Israel with land. That Bible, in fact, is still on display at the Herzl Museum there in Jerusalem. Now, in 1887, when you look at the Jewish population in America, now back in the 1600s, New York wasn't called New York. It was called New Amsterdam. And as you moved into the 1800s, the Jewish population in New York was about 250,000, a quarter million people. But then in, in, in a matter of a few years, by 1917, the Jewish population in New York went from 250,000 over 2 million, almost a tenfold increase. What was the cause of the explosion? What was the cause of the population explosion? Well, it kind of goes back to Blackstone and it goes back to Herzl and it goes back to, to the history of America with that. In 1890, Blackstone, he chaired a conference and the conference was called the Past, Present and Future of Israel. And again, this was something that was received around the world and Blackstone had such, such power and impact that when he spoke, people listened. In 1891, Blackstone met with Benjamin Harrison, American pre President Benjamin Harrison, along with Secretary of State James Blaine. So Blackstone met with the President and the Secretary of State, and he presented to them what's called the Blackstone Memorial. Now, I said the population in New York increased almost tenfold shortly after this, by 1917. So what was this Blackstone Memorial? See, people want to criticize America for uh, supporting Israel, being behind Israel. They need to understand the history of that. The Blackstone Memorial it, it said it was time for the Christian nation of America to step up and, and really help the Jews restore their land. That's what it was all about. Now, over 400 leading Americans signed this, this paperwork, this document. The Blackstone Memorial was signed by people like D.L. Moody. It was signed by members of Congress. It was signed by five mayors, mayors of city like, uh, cities of Chicago and Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. Their mayors signed this. The Blackstone Memorial was signed by the governor of Massachusetts, W.E. Russell. The chief justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Melvin Fuller, he signed the Blackstone Memorial. The Speaker of the House, T.B. Reed, he signed the Blackstone Memorial. The Chairman House Committee of Foreign Affairs, Robert Hitt, he signed the memorial. President of the Security and Stock Exchange, B.F. Jacobs, signed the memorial. Current Congressman and future President William McKinney signed it. Bank Presidents, John Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, people you've heard of, Cyrus McCormick, they signed this. 
and editors and publishers from 93 national newspapers all signed the Blackstone Memorial saying that America needed to get behind this and help the Jewish nation have land for themselves. So what happened was the response to that was not well received around the world. In fact, in Russia, in the 1800s, Russia imposed what's called the May Laws. 1882, the May Laws became laws where Russia said Jews, anybody who was Jewish, could no longer have property. They couldn't move freely among Russia. And any kind of escrow that was in uh, real estate that was an escrow was going to be stopped and, and, the, and the deal was going to be wiped out. So they really pushed the, the, uh, the Jews into poverty. They couldn't own land. They couldn't own property. They couldn't move around. The, their freedom was limited. So the May laws of 1882, because of Blackstone and some of the things that were being said, pushed the Jews literally out of Russia. And, and what the Jews started to do, and they started to walk, literally, they started to walk west and they went into, into Germany. And when they arrived into Germany, many of them then received documents to go to America, to become immigrants into America. Thus, the tenfold increase from 250,000 to over 2 million by 1917. Now, when you look at all this, understand that the president at the time, the first president of the United States, George Washington, he was a huge supporter of Israel and of the Jewish people. And in fact, from 1789 to 1797, as he was president, he said that he wanted the United States to be to resemble the God who created the United States was the same God who who gave the nation of Israel its its beginning, who allowed Israel to come out of poverty and slavery in Egypt. And as we saw history repeat itself, Israel's is going into poverty again around the world. It was happening in Europe. It was happening in Russia. In America, he wanted, he wanted America to be different. He wanted America to welcome any Jewish immigrants. He wanted, in fact, he prayed that those who came to America would be blessed you know, that America would be like the, the, the ground where their Messiah would come and that the Jews would be blessed with the quote, the dew of heaven, which is an Old Testament quote. So Washington knew the scriptures and he knew that, that God wanted the Jews to be blessed. So he wanted America to be a blessing. And in fact, if you go to New York now, the Statue of Liberty, you see the plaque on the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. Who wrote that? That was written by a Jewish immigrant. You know, Emma Lazarus was the Jewish immigrant who wrote, who penned those words. And they're, they're on the plaque in the, uh, the, uh, the Statue of Liberty. So anyhow, so America began that way. And then you go to World War I. You know, we began, that began in Europe in August of 1914. By April of, of uh, 1917, America declared war on Germany. The Holy Land itself then was under control by Turkey, by the Ottomans, who were Muslim. So the Ottomans had held control of the, of the, of the Holy Land, what we call today Israel, from the, from the 1500s all the way up to World War I. And, and what happened was then President Woodrow Wilson, he said, you know, America needed to get more involved with this. He needed to help the Jews because the Ottomans, the Muslims, were again persecuting the Jews. It happened in Europe. It happened in Russia. And that was happening in the Holy Land based by, on, on, by the Ottoman Empire. So Woodrow Wilson, our president, said that we, we needed to help out. So what he did, he, said he sent the USS Tennessee, a, a, an American destroyer. He sent it to the port of Jaffa, which is there in Israel. And they rescued over 6,000 Jews. They, they went from Jaffa down to Alexandria, Egypt. Egypt had always been a safe ground for the Jews. So the U.S. president sent a U.S. battleship to Israel, to the port of Jaffa, and took 6,000 Jews from there, saved them from being persecuted and probably put to death, and brought them down to Egypt where they were safe to, to live. And if you fast forward to World War II, in North Africa, in North Africa, that was controlled by the Nazis at the time. Germany controlled that. And once again, they start to persecute the Jews. The Jews couldn't own land. The Jews couldn't move freely. The same thing happened again in history. It repeated itself. This time, the, 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 the Germany, the Nazis were, were doing this. Again, the American president stepped in. If you want to research Operation Torch, it happened in November 1942. Operation Torch. Again, we sent a U.S. Uh, battleship to Africa, a and we we rescued over four hundred thousand Jews. You know, Operation Torch was a huge success. And when, when you look at that from nineteen in the, from the nineteen forties, uh, America is involved. The U.S. president, the U.S. military, we went behind and helped the Jewish nation and helped Israel. A and then, because of all that America was doing, when you go to November of 1947, the United Nations then passed a resolution, Resolution 181, that established a land, a territory for the Jews. 
and that became that actually happened happened in May of 1948. So just looking at all this, when you see what's happening, I'm sure in the future, in the near future, you're going to see President Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, coming together, and there's going to be some kind of talk, and America's going to get behind Israel. And as they do, there's going to be people who are going to be upset with that. However, understand the history. This is not new. He's not the first president. Uh, go back and understand the May laws of 1882 in Russia. Go back and understand the Blackstone Memorial, especially that of 1891. Go back and look at Operation Torch uh, of 1942. Go back and look at the U.S. of Tennessee and what it did in 1917. Go back and look at the British Mandate uh, of 1922. The British Mandate was when they, they took the land from the Ottomans and the British Empire controlled the Holy Land and they gave the land to the Jews. Go back and look at the UN General Assembly Resolution 181 of 1947. The history is very rich with America supporting Israel. Our presidents, our leaders, uh, the 400 people who signed the Blackstone Memorial. Whether they be newspaper publishers, mayors, congressmen, bankers, they got, they got support and they supported the nation of Israel. So the, what we're seeing now in our, in our day is nothing new. In fact, it's history repeating itself. But understand the history before you draw some conclusions. So anyhow, I, I just wanted to give you the facts and the numbers, let you do with it what you want to do with it. But I hope you enjoyed this and you know, can understand that what President Trump may be doing is repeating history all over again. Uh, so anyway, we'll see you next week. We're done for this week. So um, look forward to seeing you again next week. Between now and then, God bless you.